I mean, it was potted donuts everywhere. It was bitches in lace gloves and leotards. I mean, what do you want? You got a great movie. You made a hundred. Did you die, bruh? Did you die? <laughs> already done so please make sure that you like share and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube and if you do not have a retirement slash investment plan in place through your employer please check out the acorn app below now let's talk about Morris days on time a princely life in funk part six Okay, lovers, so before I get started, the first thing I want to do is a lot of you guys have been sending me cash apps. Thank you so, so very much. But you have to do this um, because I don't know if people want their business out there. When you send me the cash app, please let me know if I can say your name on the um, video because I want to thank you publicly for helping me. I told y'all that 2019 was a rough year for me. But I am determined to make 2020 a better year with the help of you all. Mm -hmm. As he said, after Prince fired Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam, he could have walked away with the time. He could have done that without no problem. The problem was is that his ass was suffering from Stockholms and he was getting high off them damn potted donuts. He's in his feelings about losing Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, but what caught his ass was that Purple Rain movie. He was like, you know, I mean, you know, I love my brothers, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, but we get ready to be a movie star over here. So at this okay. point, Morris Dad says, with an open heart, to be quite honest with you, I didn't want to leave Prince. Ready to make Purple Rain in the dead of winter in Minneapolis. This show how much power that Prince had. We didn't have to go to L.A. to film this movie. We filmed this movie in the dead of winter in cold as a motherfucker. Minneapolis. I'm okay. glad that he is actually being honest and telling us uh, that was selfish. He knew in his heart that he probably should have left with his brothers because that was so small, few gazy shiz that Prince did with firing Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. But you know, Prince never really liked them motherfuckers anyway, to be quite honest with you. So, you know, eventually it was going to happen. I mean, uh. He was, I mean, it was a struggle from the beginning. Okay. Chris was going to fire them motherfuckers if they sucked a watermelon lollipop. You heard me. So, what Morris Day goes on to also say where he exposes himself even more was whatever anger that he had towards Prince for firing his brothers, oh, that was gone when he got the part of Morris in Purple Rain. Purple Rain, Purple Rain. Mm-hmm. Purple Rain. Talk about how the movie Purple Rain was pure chaos. One, because it was cold as a motherfucker. Two, because ain't nobody know what the hell was going on except for Prince. Because what Morris Day said was that um, they only took short takes. They didn't see the whole movie until the premiere. So they didn't know what was going on. They was lost. They just was, okay, show up, nigga. Here's your lines. Here you go. He also revealed that the reason why Prince had to hurry up and jump on top of this Purple Rain thing, because you know Prince and, uh, Prince and MJ was in this big, I'm not going to say beef, but competition in regards to rivalry, who's the best, they the same age, they getting it done. I already done told you, huzzies, that Prince was better than Michael Jackson. Now, some of you MJ fans came across here and tried to talk shit to me. I don't care what you say, okay? But your pappy can't play instruments the way that Prince can. He can't get funky with it the way that Prince can. I mean, he might be able to look at something and say, yeah, that's good, that's good. I can dig that. Oh, but Prince can make what's good. It's a difference. Okay, you just can say what's good. Prince can make what's good. But anyway, the reason why purple, uh, the reason why Prince had to jump on top of this Purple Rain thing was because at the same time, Michael Jackson was working on that thriller thing. Okay, and what Prince could not have was MJ 
around there showing him up. He couldn't do it. Okay, so this motherfucker gonna make a 20 minute video? Well, I'm gonna make a whole movie. So anyway, let's get into the financing part about this, okay? Because even though the record execs was 100% behind Prince, oh, the movie people was like, I don't know, nigga. We in the dead of winter, and you gonna take this thing out Minneapolis? I don't know, nigga. I don't know. Prince used his money to finance the majority of the movie. Now, hold on, Mars Day. This is where I'm going to have to give you the business, brother. Okay? Because you wanted Prince to give you more than the $50,000 deal, which we're going to discuss later on, too. But the fact that Prince utilized the majority of his money, he deserves the majority of the profit. Now, I'm not saying that you deserve that 50000 that few gazy, you know, deal that he gave you. But, I mean, brother, it was his money. He was the one to put his money on the poker table, not you. So what he said was that the budget was $7 million and Prince used the majority of his money. Therefore, whatever the profit is, the majority of it should go to Prince. Now, I, like I said, I don't think you deserved just 50000 but I do believe that Prince desi deserved whatever turnover or profit it was because it was his goddamn money. He goes okay. on to talk about the director. His name was Albert Magnialo. Now, Magnialo was actually an editor for another movie that Daryl Hannah, Hannah was in. Was that the girl who was a mermaid or the fish? That wasn't the white girl with the cornrows, was it? No, that was Bo Derek. But anyway, so uh, what's his name? Magnolio. I'm sorry, sir, I don't know you to pronounce your name perfectly, okay? Magnolio was the editor on another movie. Prince initially wanted the director from uh, the Daryl Hannah movie, but the, Dar the director was like, no, I don't know you, nigger. I don't know you. Magnioli said, okay, I'll do it. Now, he is an, he is an editor with experience, but he is a director in experience. So during the 1999 um, tour, Morris Day had said that Prince had been playing with the idea of a biopic that would include his love life, um, his career, his music, his music career, and his problems with his dad. He okay. said that the writing went from dark to light to light to dark. And I didn't really think of it like this, but Morris Day had to break it down in, reg in regards to the darkness of the movie, but hold tight, we'll get there. Okay, so the time was casted as the competition. Wendy and Lisa of the Revolution was casted as the frustrated bandmates who just wanted the kid to listen to their ideas. And Prince said, I'm sorry, and Morris Day said that that was not far from the truth. Vanity and Prince has broke up by that time but child one of y'all put down in the comments that Moore's day was hunching on vanity and why do i believe that i believe that to be true because both of them was chasing potted donuts down the street okay so anyway him prince and vanity broke up so now uh prince finds apollonia and bring her in okay now she was and i didn't know this apollonia was a tv actress a raiders cheerleader and a beauty queen. Child, I didn't know that, Apollonia. I didn't know that girl. Morris and the kid were rivals for the love of Apollonia, which worked also, okay? Prince chimes in and says, you act like you didn't benefit from the movie. You act like you've got a problem with me. Morris today said, not at all. I benefited big time. I surely benefited, and I loved being the loser. In the movie, I said, Oh shit. Morris Day goes on to talk about how, when Prince approached him with the idea of Purple Rain, it was no explanations. He just said, Hey, you want to be in a movie? Hell yeah, I want to be in a movie. Okay, well, here go 50,000. What Morris Day didn't know that he was signing on to was the 50,000 was going to take care of his pay for him and his bandmates. And when he wasn't on tour with Prince, they asses still belong to Prince. I told you. Prince don't believe in none of his people doing part-time jobs because, like MD said, uh, yeah, 
Prince owns you. Everybody connected to Prince had Stockholm's. It's, why I keep calling it Stockholm? Stockholm Syndrome. So Morris Day goes on to talk about how he knows he probably should have contacted a lawyer because it was old Fugazi deal, but Morris Day said he didn't give two fucks why because he was too busy eating potted donuts. And then we go on to the acting coach right now. Don't forget that Morris Day been eating potted donuts since Purple Rain a little bit before Purple Rain then started, okay? So when the acting coach came in and started saying, act like a butterfly, act like an oak tree, Morris Day thought it was stupid. He was like, I'm not going to do this bullshit. This is bullshit. So what Prince did was pull his ass aside and say, listen to me, listen, listen, Clarence, listen. You are fucking up the church money. Nigga, pull yourself together or you're going to be out of this movie, the time, the Prince camp, Everything, bitch, get yourself together. I said, ooh. And Morris Day said he tried to pull himself together, but it didn't work, you know, because he's still eating on them damn potted donuts, okay? But anyway, it ended up working um, for his good because when they doing acting classes, he's still acting a fool. Now, the director, Maglioli, you know, told Prince to stand down, brother. You may got something with this damn fool right here, okay? Which ended up being the light part of Purple Rain being a dark movie. So you had a dark movie that had comic relief from Moore's Day. So how it further worked out for Moore's Day while being a damn fool on a set of Purple Rain while eating pot of donuts was that the director was pulling him to the side and they was having private readings. Now the director was like, if there's anything that does not work for you, but you want to put your judge on it, go for it. Morris Day goes into saying, overall, this movie was hella fun. Purple Rain was fun. Of course it was fun, nigga. You was down there with all the women's who was dressed half naked with powdered donuts, okay? They was serving powdered donuts. Prince chimes in and he say, oh, fun. Fun? It wasn't fun for me when I had to send people to go look for your ass. Morris Day said, I can't be on set at 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm still asleep. Matter of fact, that's when I'm just going to sleep. Morris Day chimed in and said, but I made it fun. What do you want from me? I mean, it was potted donuts everywhere. It was bitches in lace gloves and leotards. I mean, what do you want? You got a great movie. You made a hundred. Did you die, bruh? Did you die? So the movie was taped at this club called First Ave in downtown Minneapolis. Now, a bit of the history about the club, okay? The club was originally a Greyhound bus station, you know. Okay. But... What ended up happening was the people turned it into a club, which was first ab that was aimed towards white people and white groups, okay? Now, Morris Day knew that to be true because when he said, or when he referenced flight time and Grand Central, neither groups would be able to play in that club or in that establishment. Prince changed that. Once Prince got in there, he loved it. He loved the way the environment worked with the movie. So what and Morris Day said was that they taped the movie in the freezing cold. Now, the generators were always broken down because, you know, it was extra standing outside of the club everywhere trying to keep warm in their little scantily clad outfits. But, you know, they standing out front because they want an opportunity to be an extra. Okay, even Morris Day's little brother, Jesse, was an extra in the movie. Like the little right. nuances, despite Morris Day and nobody knowing what the hell is going on, it all came together and in Purple Rain was successful. So okay. here we go, Morris Day talking more about them potted donuts. Okay, he said Prince was on a natural high. I was just high. Morris felt like the drugs helped him to be the best character that he can be in a movie. Nigga, please. You you keep saying that. You you keep believing that. Then he goes on to talk about this story, child. Prince got hands, y'all. Prince got hands. Anyway, so here we go. Prince is sick of Morris Day's shit. 
This is my movie, bruh. Okay. You know, Morris came on set late and high, okay? Prince, on the other hand, you know, he pissed. He ran up to Morris, push him. I'm sick of your shit, nigga. Before anything so got to popping, Big Chip, Prince's bodyguard, grabbed Prince. Somebody else from the time grabbed Morris. Now, Morris was like, I was about to rip Prince's head off. I don't know, nigga. I don't know. Them little niggas can fight. I don't know. I don't know. Now, this is what Morris Day says about Prince. And I would love your input on this. I think that Morris Day was unfair when he said this. I think that um, this was totally his interpretation at the time. But let me tell you what Morris Day said. What he said was that Prince was in macho mode when he was doing Purple Rain. He felt like Prince spoke through his music. That's how he communicated, which, you know, can be a way of how a lot of people communicate that are creative through their music, art, dance, you know, whatever. So this is how Morris Day describes Prince's macho behavior through Purple Rain, okay? What he said was Prince always felt a certain kind of way after he was booed when he was opening for the Rolling Stones by all them bikers. He said because... They called him the F word, it bothered him. You know, I think, I think it will always bother him, you know. And I'm going to talk later on about something that I'm going to have to call Morris Day out about in regards to Prince's sexuality, but yeah, we're going to go back to that. What Morris Day said was that Prince dressed like a biker in leather and rode a big motorcycle and had the women because that was his way of getting back at those bikers for treating him the way that, um, you know, he was treated when he was booed off stage at the Rolling Stones concert. Now, Prince chimes in again and say, what are you saying, brother? More say, I mean, I didn't already said it enough. All I would say when people would ask me, was you gay, brother, is don't leave him with your mammy or your sister, or your me mom, or, you know, your daughter. I'm saying I, that it's like, I don't know. Like, I'm getting the feeling that Morris Day is just not saying no. He's saying everything but no, okay? Because there's going to be something else that Morris Day is going to say that we're going to talk about. Now, I can dig it, okay? I can truly, truly dig it. But... I don't, I don't know. I'm questioning Prince's sexuality again at this point. Hey, Ain't I, nobody see what the heck was going on. They didn't know what the end result was going to be until they got to the premiere. Morris Day is exa exuberated because he's like, well, damn, they put a whole lot of me in it. Now, at the end, it was a hot mess. Y'all made me look bad, but at least I had a lot of scenes in the movie. So Morris Day goes on to talk about the two... Big hits that came from Purple Rain for the time. It was The Bird and Jungle Love. Morris Day said, man, if you would have put those two songs on the album, man, I could have got so much money. Prince said, it wasn't a time album, brother. It was a Prince and the Revolution album, brother. Now, Morris Day believes that Prince purposefully did not put those two songs on the album. I'm inclined to believe that he purposefully didn't do it either because I told you that damn Prince is a whole maniacal fool, okay? That nigga is a maniac. Why? Because he don't want his people to grow no bigger than him. And when I think about it, there's nobody that was in his camp that grew larger than him. But I'm gonna leave that there for y'all to think about it, okay? Prince chimes in and says, you keep kissing my ass and then you kick my ass. What's the problem? Morse Day said, look, I'm good, brother, but let's not ignore the fact that you casted yourself as the underdog and then you became the victor all at the expense of Morris. <sighs> Bruh, this movie is not about you, Morris Day. This movie is not about you, brother. Fuck! Anyway, 
If you have not already done so, please make sure that you like and share this video because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this, the same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down, naysayers, my patron love. Have a good one. Peace.